all activities, interactive experiences, and more. Visit Disney.com slash NBA experience for tickets and more information. Jimmy Lee scores again. After the free throws, a very quick move up the floor by Africa. And now on the floor, Tissington lost the ball. Jimmy Lee slips and couldn't corral it for Africa. This is what we're talking about, the quick outlet pass. Advances it up the floor. You got a runner ready in position on the other end. Since it was 15-15, Africa has outscored Canada 19-2. Tissington bumped and fouled. Kadeem Jeong from Senegal called for the foul. But what an offensive possession because Africa was everywhere in the lanes, not allowing easy passes or anyone to dribble, and the ball movement was exquisite. To answer at the other end with a three-point try. That was missed by Delica Cabea, but a score inside for Africa on the offensive rebound. <laughs> Up ahead. Yolanda scores again. Then a dominant second quarter. It's going to be a long three taken to try to beat the buzzer and no good for Kadeem Jong. But the uh, 1.30 local time has agreed with them much more, Sarah. Here is what they've done offensively today. 16 made shots, 11 assists, 30 paint points. Bermine caught between two minds, thought about driving. Basketball is, so it's really, it, it's a beautiful thing to watch because it's very visible, the connection you see between the boys and girls teams and, you know, really across all of these continents, all of these countries, and also here in the United States. Three-pointer made by Tissington after Maru Bermine had scored on a putback a moment ago. A putback. Inside, quick jump, scoring, Ilonga. Juba C. Ilonga from Congo. Africa, and so many players like Danny Green out there with the kids and getting a chance to talk and, and be around them. Of course, we have the great Vince Carter yes. entering his 22nd season on our broadcast. Uh, so that's really what's fun, because these individuals not only see them and get to watch them on TV and watch them what they play, but they're actually interacting with them and understanding that it's more than just the work that they've put in. And of course, that is, you know, so valuable. He's been such an important member uh, of our team to really talk to these kids and tell them what it takes to get to the point where he's at. Not everyone's going to be the next Vince Carter on the floor, but everyone could be the type of humanitarian type of individual that he is um, as a great human being. It puts Africa at 50 points in the paint in this game, which they currently lead by 25. A little bit more on that Africa team unity. Here's Noah. Noah. Well, Team Africa, before getting to the United States, when they were in Senegal, which just so happened to be right around the time that Basketball Without Borders was occurring in that same place, got a talking to from some legends of the game within the continent. First, it was Masai Ujiri, who helped to build that Toronto Raptors team that won the NBA championship this year, and he his message was clear, go and win. I think he's used to winning right now, so he said go and win the whole thing. Represent Africa by winning it. Then Dikembe Mutombo, who's one of the biggest names in Africa basketball of all time, said, listen, go represent the continent well. Make sure that you're on your best behavior, you're treating everybody with respect, and you see that the boys and the girls have done that with one another as well, listening to Dikembe uh, speak exactly how he did. And then they had a chance to meet with Mo Bamba a couple days ago, his parents being from the Ivory Coast. So that was another thing that all of the players got a chance to be excited for. Anytime they have a chance to meet somebody with that support. Kadeem Chong with a score for Africa. The player that you saw Vince meeting a moment ago, that footage, was Quentin Webb, who won the slam dunk exhibition on Thursday night, jumping over three people. And so, obviously, Quentin Webb and Vince Carter <laughs> need to meet to talk slam dunks. Without a doubt. Kadeem Chong. Missed the shot inside. Rebound for Uros Milosevic. And it's a mid-range baseline jumper then. The passing lanes in the post, and they find ways to score from different positions. And I think we know that we talked about some of these key players and, and the guys' names who we are starting to get to know on a regular basis, but everyone is contributing in some fashion. Well, if there's a road back for Canada, obviously shot-making like that will be a very, very key part of it as Yovan Milosevic 
drains a three to open up the third quarter. Speaking of names we've come to know, Milosevic has been impressive. And that's a three-second call on Africa. Turnover pays in. Jalik Dunkley, transition, had a good look. Defense backed off, and he missed it. Missed the chipping. A3 is no good for Kadeem Jong. Offensive rebound and put back go. Another area that Africa has been able to cause a lot of headway and be dominant is on the glass. And it's not just the offensive glass, but controlling. Will Moutier, Serge Ibaka, Amadou Diallo, who is at Oklahoma City, Abdel Nader is from Egypt, Gorgi Chang, Luol Deng, Salah Bejri of the Mavericks with, from Tunisia, and Don Maker uh, at the time from uh, with the Milwaukee Bucks from South Sudan. 13. African-born players on NBA opening night rosters when last season started. Certainly seen a lot from Team Africa, but it's so impressive to remind yourself these are 13 and 14-year-old young men yes. that have got such really special skill sets, even at this age. U.S. and international girls champions still to be crowned. Girls Global Championship will be played tomorrow. That will be on Fox along with the Boys Global Championship game as well. And to reiterate, that is one of the things that makes this Junior NBA Tournament so unique. The boys and girls on the same stage. Shots good for Kadeem Jong. Six games they play this week, Sarah. Africa has led by as many as 35 points. A class apart from their competition in the international bracket for the second year in a row. Haven't seen Saeed Michelle until here at the end of the game. Emmanuel Ovenibi, number two. Stay home. Yep. Great leadership. And they're listening, too, and that's what's great about it. Charnitz. Great defense. Slapped away by Diakite. Transition to hand jump. Easy hops. Mamine, wow. 14, man. 14. Easy, Easy hops. <laughs> Noah Meyer. I'm say, oh, I'm taking over. This is my team. I'm doing whatever I want. But I'm impressed by the way they've just stayed together and the stars have kept everyone involved. Oh, pick and roll. The jump shot is missed by Kadeem John, but it's followed home. Evaluated, by the way by senior members of the NBA officiating staff. We talked with Monty McCutcheon before the game tonight. The head of referee operations says it's a nice smooth move to the basket. And Kadeem Jong is scored again on a drive to the hoop. He's got 11 points in the game. But refereeing and being a part of this tournament is a special opportunity for these G League referees who, again, are being evaluated by NBA officials. Some of the referees, uh, Ashley Moyer Gleesh, for example, Natalie Sago last year, refereed in this tournament. They were G League referees and then broke in and refereed their first NBA games last yeah, year. I got me a good technical from Ashley. <laughs> Sorry to bring uh, that up. Sorry year. about that. No, no, no. It was, uh, I mean, it was just great. I mean, just. Should have taken a selfie with her last summer. <laughs> uh, uh, right now, because sometimes when you get, we're seeing a lot of young guys come into the NBA and they're still trying to feel their way and communication. Offensively and defensively is lacking. Yeah. Well, Vince, a moment ago, brought up his technical foul last year from Ashley Moyer Gleesh as it's taken to the basket and scored again by Kadeem Jong. That was season 21. I, I, it probably is a moment. He's knocking down some shots. He's held up, you know, guys to say, okay, let's run something when he could have put his head down and gotten to the basket. So the maturity is, is obviously already there. Just exciting to see that, that development. Going inside is Gabriella Cavosh from Italy. Still to come. Different. <laughs> uh, that skill you would see juniors and seniors in high school and what you're seeing now yeah. at young ages is this. Like what we're watching here, this is like juniors and seniors playing basketball. You, these kids are 13 and 14 years old. It's, just, it's unbelievable. Africa in front by 21. Oh, it did he getting some run here in the second quarter. Ball moving on the perimeter. And Mamine anxious to show off the improved shot for a sideline out of bounds play. With 17 left on the shot clock for Africa. 
Mabine has made one three. He bluffed that three, kept the defense honest, drove it inside, left it for Faye. Pass fake and then a shot. It's off the turnover of the game. With 41 points off of the turnover. I mean, so. the, the last team that you want to put in transition yeah, off fly ball turnovers. Great is pass. And slam dunk off the great pass. Rising up and finishing with authority is Emmanuel Owenibi. As a young big, when you get a bounce pass, you do not want Said Michelle lost it. Hugo and Rossi from Sweden. Baseline J is missed. Said Michelle with the rebound and the spin dribble to try to get out of a little trouble in the backcourt. Catch inside and on the reverse. Well, I grabbed the board, swung the elbow a little bit. NBA Global Championship from the ladies of Central. And there's a freeze. Jimmy Lee now with 20 seconds. Deep three. Yes! Big shot! After turning the ball over, Deep Onge. 44 all. Africa. They were the runner up last season.